I think there's some, uh, frankly, deception and uh, dishonesty and just bullcrap going on. Like it, the media is so caught. The media, the world, racism right now is the number one sin. Right? It's like the worst thing you can do. Uh, not apparently sexual assault. The, the way you can tell, one, all the fervor. The number two, the fact that the the public protests with thousands of people together, close, yelling, is deemed important enough to negate stay-at-home orders or avoiding large groups. Like this is the one thing. Like I mentioned, I think I mentioned it earlier at the beginning of the, pro the podcast. But if you want to protest stay-at-home orders, they literally say that's not that's not acceptable. I can't, so I can go to a protest with 10,000 people, but I can't go to my church with more than 135 in Cedar Rapids. I have to maintain six feet social distancing. I think that's hypocrisy. I think it's bull crap. I am in agreement with this person. Uh, when is it going to end? When are we going to not have to social distance at church anymore? I don't know. I shared an article with him. I've I shared before. I'll put it online that kind of sums up my uh, view on this. And what I'm trying to do is is balance a lot of things. And at some point, and it's not just me. It's the whole PT. I'm, I'm influencing that for sure. But I'm going to generally tend toward submission to law. You know, like that's what that's our default. Like, cops says pull over, you pull over. If they say, look, they've written laws and say, hey, you need to keep social distancing. Like, I'm gonna do that. At some point, it may come, and we talked about this. It may come a time when we say, um, no, no, no. Actually, we have hired you to to work for us and serve the public good, and you aren't doing that. You're making unjust, you're putting unjust restrictions on businesses, churches, families. I mean, frankly, dude, this is some straight up bull crap. We've had funerals in our church where they weren't allowed to invite people. Yeah. But thousands of people can go to the George Floyd funeral. That is hypocrisy and bull crap. I'm not in favor of that. Does that mean necessarily then that I'm going to leave my church in protest? Maybe. All right, so I'm, I'm just weighing a lot here, like, are we going to do that? Are we all prepared to go to jail? Am I prepared to put my position, my use my position to get maybe other people in my church to go to jail? I don't know. They may not. They may ignore us because they're caught up with all, all the other stuff. The point is, I share your concerns. My general posture has been, hey, we can tolerate some inconvenience, some injustice. It seems to be moving in a direction, of, in a positive direction, and I want to, I want to uh, kind of bide my time and just, and, and see our way out of this. It's, it seems to be, to be the direction that seems tolerable to me. I share the concerns. I see the bull crap. I see the lies, the manipulation, the injustice, the, frankly, virtue signaling. And I, um, so, Joe, any thoughts on that? This is kind of my quick response to that. I don't know when the social distancing is going to be over. Um, it's a lot of bull crap, man. Yeah, I agree pretty much with what you said. I, I think that we need to be aware that... Um, don't don't be surprised that there are forces at play that hate that hate Jesus and hate his people. Okay? Like let's not can we not be surprised by this, everybody? I mean don't act like you never read the Bible, okay? Well they may not be surprised. They may but they may just be going, okay, but then what do we do about that? How we how we respond. How, how does the Bible tell us to respond? Well, it's a good question. How does the Bible tell us to respond? Um, well, I think there's there's ways that if there 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 are lines where they say, hey, you can't actually you need to you need to bow your knee to the cultural god, and we say, no, we're not going to do that. Question is, what does that look like? When does that time come? I personally believe that time is coming here. I think it will largely surround the, the issue of LGBT. Um, that's another issue, and I think it's going to be the inroad, the deep, deep inroad to that is going to be racial equality, which is going to bleed uh, right into um, uh, all sexual, kind of sexual expression and, and how that's uh, viewed. So that's that's a different subject for a different day, but I do think the day is coming, and we 
are going to have to respond in some way. I don't think, though, that the primary way is to defend. I don't think the primary way, even when you react and say, no, I won't bow the knee, you're not defending anything. You are saying, I, I worship this God, and he says this is what we do. We worship him alone. This is what he says is good. We follow this. You're not so much defending a way of life when it comes to that. Um, so with the with the social distancing, yeah, I can see it. I can see it coming down to just saying, "Hey, we're going to gather. We're going to gather, regardless of what the guidelines are. We're going to gather." And I and I think you know, I'm not saying it's right now because I think we are gathering right now. So we're good. Well, but without some of the restrictions and. Uh... Yeah, and I, and I guess I would say if, if this continues forever, you know, a year and long, you know, like, then... I don't have a I timeline. Just, I just the don't point know. Is, yeah, we don't have a timeline, but the point is, I just want to affirm the concern and, and know that, but I also encourage you that we, do, we don't want to be reactionary as, a, reactionary as a PT and just go, wow, screw that, let's go do this. Like, we, if we moved in that yeah. direction, it would, it would take conversation and prayer and, 